Do you remember in January of 2023, when Rio Tinto lost a capsule of radioactive, cesium-137? Today, I want to show you why these, so-called, orphan sources, are just so fucking scary, and how it is, that they can, even, end up in people's homes. And I am going to show you what you can do, even with a cheap Geiger counter, to protect yourself and your family. Whilst most people know, about some of the medical applications of radioisotopes, such as radiotherapy, medical applications in fact only represent a very small fraction of the uses for these types of dangerous gamma ray sources. The vast majority, of the world's high intensity gamma ray sources, are in fact used in industry. These industries include, mining, or processing, aggregate production, the production of cement, the oil and gas industries, refining of raw materials and chemical production. This list also includes, end products, such as shipbuilding, construction, iron and steel production and most significantly, agriculture and the food processing industries. All of these applications, require gamma ray sources that are of a very high intensity, needing the kind of levels that are quite simply, deadly to humans and all other forms of life. These sources might look large, but almost all of the material you see, is used for shielding. The actual active materials, are just a few millimeters in length, width and depth. I mentioned the food processing industry, not because it poses a danger to our foodstuffs, but because, these are usually the largest, the most intense and the most commonly found, radioactive isotope sources on the planet. Typically, these gamma ray sources, need to be stored in ponds of water, when not in use, not unlike, spent fuel from a nuclear power station. Now considering that, as a species, we produce more food, than any other product, then this is quite worrisome. Now, let's compare just the food processing industry to nuclear power production. Of all the countries that use nuclear power, France has one of the highest ratios of nuclear, to other power sources. Yet, in France, there is more high intensity gamma rays produced by the food processing industry, than there is within all of France's nuclear power reactors combined. Okay, so there are a lot of high intensity gamma ray generators around the planet. But why should we care about that? Well, the issue is, what happens to these, pellets of death, once they are not useful to the fickle requirements of industry? The International Atomic Energy Agency, is the current regulatory body, that tries its best to control, these high intensity radioisotope sources through their life cycle, or as the IAEA, likes to say, control from cradle to grave. But, clearly, they are not very good at this job. On average, more than 1000 of these sources become, what is known as, orphan sources, every single year. The IAEA's holiday photos, don't tell a happy story, about what happens to these deadly radioactive tools, once they are discarded. From the agency's own figures, in the United States alone, it is estimated that there are over 30,000 orphan sources at large, some of these dating back to the 1950s. The agency only started getting serious about tracking the production and location of these sources, after the fall of the Soviet Union, so older sources are essentially invisible to their database. This means, that there are probably, tens of thousands of these, that have ended up in scrap yards, and later melted down to create, new raw metals. Of all the industries that use recycled metals, 
the construction industry is probably the most significant. Most rebar used in the construction of modern buildings has a high percentage of recycled metals. Those metals stand a slight chance of being contaminated with lost gamma ray sources. So, potentially the rebar used in the construction of your home can have been contaminated with the waste from gamma ray sources. Apart from the rebar, the actual concrete itself can also contain lost radioisotope sources, many of the gamma ray sources from concrete plants have also been lost. Since the 2000s, many of these potential contamination routes have been mitigated by compulsory radiological scanning of the materials, both into and out of the recycling process. Which means that if your home was built between the 50s and the year 2000, it is certainly worth performing a basic radiological survey. Even if your home is not constructed from reinforced concrete, you might want to consider the metal parts that were used in the construction of your home. By this I mean the door hinges, door handles, the screws, the brackets, and everything else that hold the wooden parts together, all of these were made from the cheapest possible sources of metals, which again means a significant amount of recycled metals that could be potentially contaminated with radioisotopes. So, how much danger is presented by mixing a few grams of cobalt-60 into recycled metals? Well, in terms of immediate danger, very little. You aren't going to be suffering from acute radiation sickness as a result of short-term exposure, in the same way that you most certainly would be if you were exposed to the original gamma ray source directly. Typical ladles used to recycle steel can contain several hundred tons of molten metal, so a few grams of a radioisotope is going to be highly diluted. With a few basic calculations, it can be concluded that if a typical industrial gamma ray source, with 300 curies of radioactivity, got into recycled metals, it would result in a batch of recycled steel that has anywhere between 50 and 100 times the normal background radiation levels. This is roughly the equivalent of getting a dental x-ray every single day. This elevated level of radiation exposure is not likely to cause health issues in short time scales, and in most cases, won't result in any health problems at all. The issue is that those people that do suffer from later health problems are going to see effects after a decade or two, and they are unlikely to even be still living in that same home when issues are noticed. The major concern in my mind is that of the health of our children because their growing bodies are more susceptible to gamma radiation. Their cellular growth rate is far more accelerated than for an adult, so the impact of a single cellular abnormality is multiplied by their high growth rate. What needs to happen when a cancer diagnosis is made is for a database to be created of the patient's lifestyle, the jobs they have had, the addresses that they have resided at, and anything else that can be cross-referenced to help find hot spots in the underlying causes. But, somehow I doubt that can ever happen, I expect that the paranoid folks will shout and wave their freedom banners around, and once again, common sense will be thwarted by the army of the stupid. Perhaps we should ask all landlords to perform a radiological survey of their properties. I doubt if that idea will get any traction either. After all, what landlord wants to find out that their shiny Fifth Avenue building is now worth less than zero? Even if that comes at the cost of the health of their tenants. The International Atomic Energy Agency is a UN umbrella group that was founded in 1957 to supervise the nuclear weapons treaties between Washington and Moscow. From the 1960s through to the 1990s, this organization of well-paid bureaucrats was kept busy ensuring that both sides were keeping their word on the agreements that they made. Once the Berlin Wall fell, this organization faced a very severe threat to its own existence. So, instead of going extinct, they did what all bureaucratic organizations do when faced with a threat. 
They diversified to increase their footprint and their relevance to their target audience. The target audience were the governments of Russia and the United States, and their footprint expanded to include industrial sources of radiation emission. Essentially, they expanded their portfolio from two competing powers, to all the countries of the world. Suddenly, this agency, became the sole arbiter of all things nuclear, and their budget expanded to over $500 million per year. This agency only employs 2,500 people, which means that these folks, must have pretty high salaries, and fly business or first-class flights wherever they travel to. How fucking wonderful for them. Earlier in this video, I talked about buying a Geiger counter. This is a very sensible idea, and for a couple of good reasons, neither of which have anything to do with, surviving the aftermath of a nuclear war. I am not going to recommend, any particular brand or model of Geiger counter, there are a lot of models available on Amazon, or other online marketplaces. There are a couple of important points to know, to help you to select a model, that is going to be useful to you. There are a lot of shitty Geiger counters out there on the market, and some of the things that Amazon will present from a search, are not even Geiger counters at all. A suitable device, uses a Geiger Muller tube to detect radioactive emissions. It only really needs to be sensitive to gamma radiation, and unless you have a budget of thousands of dollars, then it is unlikely to have a decent level of sensitivity, to alpha or beta radiation anyway, so don't bother with models that claim, to be able to detect alpha particles in particular, because it is totally pointless for this application. The other feature that a useful Geiger counter needs, is a display that can show the measured dose rate, and, most importantly the, average rate. It is important to be able to get a long duration average value, to ensure reasonably stable readings, of these relatively low levels of background radiation. And don't think that you can just wave your new Geiger counter around, like in the movies, and it will start clicking like crazy, when a hazard is found. If that does happen, then you are already in deep shit, so, call the authorities and just sit back and watch your home being demolished as you gradually wither and die. For the rest of us, we will patiently conduct, a methodical survey of our homes. This is a great opportunity to get the whole family involved. And this brings me to the other reason that every family should own a Geiger counter. Educating children in the factual reality of what radiation actually is, instead of having them learn from alarmist propaganda, is important. I don't want to shape or control my kids' beliefs, but I do want them to be able to separate, fact from fiction, when they form their own views. And who knows, perhaps having a basic tool to measure background radiation, might stimulate more scientific interest in them. The processes that underpin the emissions of radiation are the key to understanding the fundamental physics of our universe. First of all, go outside your home, and away from buildings, and take a long duration reading of the background levels in your local area. This will be probably be the lowest reading you are going to find. On a piece of paper, draw a simple map of the rooms in your home. Next, take five measurements of the average levels, in each room, one from the center, and then one from each corner. Normally, a Geiger counter will take an average over five minutes, so just set the counter down on the floor and wait for each average to complete, noting down the values on the map that you made. Typically, the indoor readings will be higher than the outdoor ones. This is because there is just more stuff around you, that contains natural background isotopes when you surround yourself with a house. If you live in a single-story wooden home, the indoor levels will be about 1.5 times higher than the outdoor reading, and for a concrete apartment block, about 2 times higher. As an example, where I live, in Shenzhen, China. The outdoor levels are about 90 nanosieverts per hour and, up to double that, 
within our apartment building. Don't worry, if all the levels are higher than where I live, levels up to 300 nanosieverts per hour are not abnormal. If you are getting a readings, that are consistently above 500 nanosieverts per hour, then consider moving house. Also if you find a hot spot in your home that is over 1 microsievert per hour, then you should investigate further. Don't take readings next to smoke detectors, or other known, short-range sources of radiation, it will distort the results of your survey. Once you have collected the data, you should average all of the outdoor readings, and also the indoor figures. The ratio of these two averages should not exceed 3 to 1. And no hot spots, should it exceed a ratio of 5 to 1. I was planning to show some fun experiments, that you can do yourself, if you own, a Geiger counter, but this video is already 4 times longer, than I originally planned to make it. I am going to make some review videos of the radiation detection equipment that I own, so I will add these experiments to those videos. This particular model, is a very low cost one, and can be bought for under $50 on Amazon. Maybe, I will also make a video about the time I took the kids uranium mining. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my little video, or at least found some parts of it interesting. If you want to see more of this kind of video, you could always press the subscribe button. This is not a commercial channel, nor will it ever be, so I can say what I want, and YouTube's algorithm can go and get fucked. Thank you for your time.